Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children from all around the world. It's Vin Robinson back with another great Coast to Coast Sport moment. We're here today because the sun is shining and when we're driving through the beautiful uh, community of St. Boniface, we took a stop today. We stopped in to see Darcy at Zealous Medispa. Darcy, welcome to the show today. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, we stopped in to see Darcy about um, our reconciliation uh, block party that we're hosting at the pool at Notre Dame Community Center coming up on July 1st. Uh, there's some maintenance things that need to happen in the summer, uh, you know, actually all year round. Um, hands and feet. We're going to talk a little bit about that today with Darcy. Uh, you petty, Manny Petties, you do that here, correct? Absolutely, we do, okay. yes. Ongoing maintenance, it's a good thing that people need that they're not aware of. For sure. Right. For um, sure. Tell people why they need the maintenance. Um, so pedicures especially are very important. Foot health is super important for people. Um, you know, the feet are the map of your body. It holds the map of your body. So, um, you know, regular work like callus work, nails, clippings, that type of thing. Um, those are things that you want to be done on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big maintenance feature. So yeah, we do have customer appreciation programs where people can, um, you know, book in six services. They pay for their first five, their sixth one is free. It's just to help people get, you know, some free services throughout the year of something that they'd be getting done anyways. Mm -hmm. Now, each month you have different promos, even birthday right. promos, yeah. et cetera, right? I mean, it's a big family, community family here. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the birthday promos. I mean, in January, I had one that I was able to take uh, advantage of, so it was great. Uh, talk a, a little bit about that. Um, so birthday credits, uh, we like to honor people's birthdays, it's special for them. Uh, so we normally offer a $30 birthday credit, mm -hmm. um, so therapeutic pedicure, a year wave treatment, or a Pro Skin 60. So it kind of covers anything that people would be interested in, year wave being body care, um, Pro Skin 60 being a facial, everybody mm -hmm. needs a nice cleansing facial, right. um, and a therapeutic pedicure. Mm -hmm. So some of the July specials, we have uh, Parafango. Uh, Tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so uh, Parafango. Parafango is skin rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it helps to just improve the impurities of the skin. Um, helps with a little bit of cellulite, a little bit of inch loss, um, very hydrating for the skin. Um, while you're in the Parafango, so it's kind of painted on. It's like a clay based you paint it on and then you're wrapped in a heated blanket, which is the body cocoon, mm -hmm. super relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, you're gonna get a 30 minute uh, Pro Skin 30 facial. Oh, wow. So, um, and we added in the eye treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's an eye mask, which helps, you know, fine lines, wrinkles, crow's feet, mm -hmm. um, dark circles, those types of things. Okay. So, yeah. And above and beyond that, there's something that I did do as well before. It was 200 crunches and about 30 minutes, no problem. 18. 18. <laughs> Even, even worse. So 200, it's 200 perfect sit-ups <laughs> right. in 18 minutes. There yes. you go. That's exactly yes. what was done. Uh, I did feel the effect. It's called the Eurowave. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about that. It's a real cool machine. Um, yes. Yeah, so the Eurowave is equivalent to 200 perfect sit-ups. Mm -hmm. um, you'll never be sore from a treatment because it works directly on the muscle, does not bypass the brain to create lactic acid, which is what makes you sore from a workout. Mm -hmm. um, it's best to do it in conjunction or in conjunction, obviously, with a healthy lifestyle. Um, as well as consecutive sessions. Um, so after 10 sessions consecutively in one area, I can guarantee a dress size loss and mm. guarantee that to stay off for six to eight months, providing you don't gain any weight. Wow. But it's muscle and muscle memory. It's always gonna be there for you, whether it's covered up or not. Mm. Um, and you can do many areas of the body as well. So it's not just targeted to the midsection. Um, it's also targeted to, you know, upper arms, breast area, you know, bum and leg combination, back, whatever area you're concerned with, we can make a program that's suitable for you. Yeah, and that program was great. Actually, what brought me in is that I had an abdominal surgery and I couldn't do proper sit-ups. So that was the whole reason <laughs> behind it to get me strong. So uh, once again, you know, here I was at the spa just thinking Manny Petty, but doing so much more here, right? Right, yes. Uh, one other great thing that that's on the menu is a lash lift and and tinting that you do as well right so uh for the viewers out there that don't know talk to us a little bit about wh exactly what that is so lash lift and tint is um pretty popular it's for those people who um want the long 
longer look. So it basically curls the lashes. It's a perm for the lash. Mm -hmm. So it's not the extensions, it's your natural lash, but they're curled and then they're tinted. So they're tinted, um, you know, the black, brown, whatever colors that you prefer. Right. Yeah. So now you heard it here first, reconciliation block party, just <laughs> one block away, not even. We're here at Provence de Miro. Uh, so we'll be down the street on July 1st, about 11 a.m. You'll get an opportunity to be able to get these great offers that you're here hearing about today. And uh, come in and visit Darcy. She's just down the street, just a block over. Um, and say hi. So once again, if people want to find you, you have a website, uh, Facebook, anything to find you? How, yes. how would they do that? Um, absolutely. We are a part of Facebook. Um, so Zealous Medispa, we have a website, www.zealousmedispa.com. Um, we're on Instagram as well. Please follow us. Give us a like. Like, love, share. You heard it here first. <laughs> Once again, Darcy, thanks so much for your time. Come in and pay her a visit. She's got a great smile. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>
a more of a athletic style hiking boot like this. Okay. Definitely we want some waterproofing on all of our hunting boots. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Gore-Tex is certainly the more popular uh, waterproofing liner and most higher end boot companies will, will use a, a material like that. When it, rubber boots are, are great for keeping all water out, but they don't breathe as well. So right. again, when that high activity is going on there, you need that good, you want that. It's about managing moisture mm -hmm. in your body, right? You don't want to get your feet super sweaty and wet when you're walking and then you get to a spot and you have to sit for a long time and then you get cold. That's how you get cold feet right. a lot of the okay. time is, is, is from the sweat cooling you off and, and then that, that heat loss happens there. So there are many different styles here. Um, if it was coming to elk hunting or early season deer hunting, I would definitely use a boot like that. A light hiker, it's not going to be overly cold, so I don't have to worry about. Yeah. Um, and, and and they are steel toe as well, right? These ones yeah. aren't. Okay. No, 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 these aren't steel toe boots. Okay. No, no, because you want that flexibility in the front of your shoe, especially right. when you're walking in an uneven terrain. Right. Um, and we can go to a, a later time of the year where I would use a boot like this when I'm sitting in the tree stand. So I'm not going very yeah. far, but you can feel how thick the insulation is yeah. inside that boot. It's almost right? like a Sorel. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's even warmer. These yeah. are Baffins. Um, wow. They're rated to minus 100 degrees, so wow. they're. Got a lot of guys like these for ice fishing. I love them for sitting in a tree stand for extended periods of time when it's, you know, minus 10, minus 15 right. degrees. And, and they give you that extra warmth because you're not moving so much. That Here's the thing, though, is that if, if you're going to, you don't want to walk a long distance in a heavy boot like this because of the sweat. Right. Right, again? So I, I'll even wear lighter hikers like these ones here mm -hmm. into the stand and pack these in with me and then put them on when I get there. Now, now you just said something very interesting. When you hunt and you're in the tree. Yeah. So... Here's an individual like me thinking all hunting is belly laying on the ground or you're laying... No, most of it's not. Right, okay. So this is another part that uh, I find interesting. So if we kind of just dip around the corner here, we'll look at some of the camouflage, um, you know, shirts and jackets and what have you, pants. Uh, but if you're in the tree, would, would you want something that's a little bit more blue or would the camouflage still work the same way? No, you know, because animals don't see the same way you and I see, okay. right? Like right. it's not... They see mostly, especially deer and ungulates, see in like, I think, shades of uh, yellow, blue, and gray, mm. right? So it's not, they don't have that vivid pop out okay. there. Um, camouflage, to me, when it comes to clothing, is important, but it's probably the least important thing that I think about when it comes mm. to clothing, because good clothing that keeps you in the field longer is what you want, right? Okay. It's got a function. The functionality of the clothing has to go first. And it's gonna be the same thing as we we're talking about with the boots. We wanna start with, uh, a lighter weight, more moisture management system that's here to. What do I got some here? More of a dry wick. Yeah, uh, so like you know, this is a, a, yeah. a really lightweight dry wick. This is this job is so this, this is, is great for early season. Like that's the temperature time that you were talking about, where right. it's warm, right? You can wear that as its own standalone piece, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to pull sweat off of your body quick. Right. It's going to keep you cool. Uh, but even as you get on in the later seasons. When you're sweating walking into a tree stand, it's still going to pull the moisture. What clothing's supposed to do, if it functions well, is keep pulling the moisture further and further away from your body and not letting that cold air come in and chill you down, mm -hmm. right? It's supposed to manage to your microclimate, as we call it, around your body so that you're, you're staying comfortable the whole time that you're in the tree. Right. So I would always start any kind of a clothing system with a lightweight moisture wicking base layer like this. Okay. Right? That's job is to pretty much purely pull sweat off of your body as you're doing activity, right, like that, so that it's not sitting against your skin and, and making you cold. Now, did, did you suggest uh, hoodies, uh, toques? Um, what's your preference? Yeah, I, and, and, and we're definitely going to get to that spot, but there's, <laughs> okay. the, the, there's, there's, so there's, there's so a system that we have okay. to go, right? So okay. I would start moisture management, base layer next to skin. Okay. Um, and then I would look at something in like kind of a mid insulation layer. Right, so we get something oh, yeah. like this, or and, and these are various types here. Yeah. Right, depending on the time of year and how much insulation you want on there. But their job is to trap heat against your body. So you don't walk into your tree stand normally wearing something like this. Mm -hmm. When you get there or get to your hunting spot and you're gonna sit down for a while, then you put it on. Okay. It's like putting you know, getting in your sleeping bag, right? right? It's there to hold the heat in once you get there. And so when it comes to clothing, we want base layer, moisture management control, we want insulation in the middle to keep us warm, mm -hmm. and then we want protection from the elements, which is our outerwear layer. Okay. Right? So I would start with a system like that, or heavier weight depending on 
the time of year and how right, cold right, it is. Right, like right, right, you have to you have to gauge it. You know, gauge it for that. Go to something like this, like these lightweight jackets, which I actually find that I use more than anything. Okay. Because they're always in my pack. I always put them on when I get there. They're just that added layer of of insulation that makes me more comfortable when I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would move down to uh, to an eyeliner, and that depends on the time of year, right? So we get something like this. This is a very lightweight, thin like a windbreak. rain jacket. This right. is a Gore-Tex jacket, so it's 100% yeah. waterproof. Mm -hmm. Right, that's gonna keep you, uh, especially in that early September time that you're talking about right. there, right? You go in there with that, it gets a little cool, you put that on, starts to rain, you throw on something like that, and now you've got that three-layer system that's protecting you completely from the elements, and mm -hmm. you're, you're staying in the tree stand or in the ground blind or out in the field instead of having to come in, you know, because you're uncomfortable being right. cold, right? Yeah. Okay, we're preparing our body. Um, next thing you need is a good plan, right? You want to go out, you sure. want to go hunting, you want a good plan. Um, survival kits, something could go wrong very quick. Water, food. Uh, I mean, again, that's, that's all situational, right? So if, if I'm going to my deer hunting spot, it's only a 20 minute drive to the edge of the city right, right. there. I'm, I'm close to a lot of people. I don't need a lot of survival kits. But yeah, if you're going up, um, you know, like uh, moose hunting up north where mm -hmm. it's quite remote, yeah, there's a ton of preparation that needs to go involved to make sure that you know, if an emergency happens, you can take care of yourself there. Um, those kind of products are probably best found at uh, like a wilderness supply or mm -hmm. mountain equipment co ops. People that specialize in a lot of backcountry stuff like that. Okay. Uh, you can get GPSs now that have satellite uh, text messaging with them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, emergency buttons that you can hit on them if something goes wrong. But like all your basic survival stuff, right? Fire starting, right. Uh, space blankets. You know, uh, you know any kind of medicines that you might need immediately like that, right? Ab ability to, to treat an emergency situation fast. But we're fortunate in the day and age that we live in that there are ways to contact emergency help instantaneously when you are in a very, very remote spot, okay, which, is, good. which is something you always want to... Safety is key, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Key. And then having a plan too, like with, you know, making sure that people who are here know where you are, right? That they know when you're supposed to be back, right? Even even if you're going on a day trip for a hunt, mm -hmm. you know, you, I tell my wife, I'm going out today, if I'm not back by this time and you can't get a hold of me. Something's up. Something's up maybe, right. you know, and these are the people that know where I'll be for mm -hmm. sure. Um, contact them and they'll come see if I'm there or, or you can get, you know, an emergency crew's coming coming before, uh, before something really goes wrong. So yeah, having a good communication plan and making sure that people know where you are is, right. is key. Right. Yeah. Now this is all great stuff that we're getting here in the first part of our interview. When we come back from this commercial break, we're going to be talking a little bit about, um, you know, some, some other kits that we should think about when we're going out into the field, uh, whether it be equipment that we're looking at, um, some different things. So Jason's going to show us a few different things when we come back and we'll take a look. Speaking of a really cool bike that we saw here. So we'll be right back. We're all fully clothed now. We got a plan together. We know where we want to go and do our hunting today. But uh, let's say that we're just sitting out there and we're not getting any activity. This might be the way to find out how to get it. So we could look at hunting deer, elk, uh, bears, sure, yeah. a number of different things. Yeah, so uh, why don't you show us a little bit of what's on the, uh, the menu here? Sure, so when it comes to um Certain times of year are more conducive to bringing animals to you instead of you sitting and waiting for them to come, right? So we have a number of uh, calls, um, scents, uh, different kinds of attractants that are there to bring animals to where you are, especially when we're sitting in a tree stand and we're spending a lot of time not going to the animals. Um, we want to bring them in. So when it comes to like something like deer hunting, we can, uh, at the right time of year, we can use rattling antlers, which are basically banging two antlers together trying to make a sound of, uh, of two bucks fighting, okay. right? Yeah. Two male deer. And uh, during the, what we call the rut in November, they're, they're looking for territory, they're looking for mates, mm. right? They're trying to establish that, right? So if, if they feel that there's other uh, bucks encroaching on their spot, right. or there might be opportunities for them to breed with a doe there, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're very likely to come in and uh, battle. battle, right? right. To, 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 to either say, you know, it's time to go or it's time to leave. So um, 
And what goes along good with that is different kind of scents. Okay. Right? So we have uh, Doe Astress and Baccarat scents. And these two here in particular are trying to uh, replicate the smell of a doe who's in heat. She's ready okay. for, for breeding, yes. right? Um, and this is a scent that's trying to establish the fact that there's another buck there that's taking over the territory. Uh, give me an example of something like this. I mean, the, the atmosphere is so huge. We've got something like this. Where, where would you put this? Um, is it a pungent smell? Where, where it's quite pungent. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to open that up no, and leave okay. it in your car. It's not an air freshener right. you want to put on your, uh, on your mirror. Okay. But, you know, if you were setting up in a, you know, if I set up in a tree stand, I'm going to put this um, in a couple spots around the stand, right? Mm -hmm. So that when the wind's blowing in certain directions, because this hunter's wheel is actually want to be mindful of which direction the wind's blowing, because okay. that's carrying sense, and you have an extremely, extremely good sense of smell. Mm -hmm. um, so we're worrying about our own smell, right? So there's actually products here. To they're, mask they're, they're, they're smell. Master, wow, okay. mask your scent, right? To, to make it so that they have a hard time smelling you, but we can all also use that to our advantage to have it's so that they're smelling things that we want them to smell that might entice them to come in and, mm. and, and check it out. So I would put those um, around my stand and maybe a triangle type of formation there so that if they catch different winds, they, they might likely come in. Especially, um, we want to appease all of animal senses, right? So if, if, we can, uh, if we can call, right? If we can use the calls, which will attract them to a longer distance, right? They hear mm -hmm. they come in. When they get there, they're expecting to smell what they heard was calling, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that we have those those scents ready for them as well. And if we can, we can go into something um, even like decoys, mm -hmm. right? Where you're having, you know, I don't have some, you know, where a deer decoy like this, right? You're putting out there. So, so it's now a full the, life. Well, size. so now they've heard it, right? So right. now they've heard heard the deer fighting. They come and they can smell that there's some deer smell in the area. And if they get there, now they see a deer that's going to probably really increase our chances that they're going to come in and check it out, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, using all those things together can, can make a really big difference to your success. Increase your chances. Yeah, for sure. I would think about hunting. I hop in my vehicle, I go and I drive somewhere, I park, and then I go for a walk, and then I find this environment. But something that I noticed here that's a little cool is that you have an electric bike that's here. Yeah, we do. Actually, yeah, yeah, so can we talk a little bit sure, about this? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, typically motorized vehicles, you'll think that they're allowed, might scare off the prey after we put all these scents out there and stuff like that. But uh, <clears throat> this might do the opposite and make your experience a little bit more enjoyable, I guess. Yeah, so in the last uh, few years, we've had, there's been a big swing to uh, using electric bikes for hunting. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's a nice way to get around some tougher terrain and the biggest thing for hunting is it's really quiet. You're not running mm -hmm. a quad or a, a truck into a spot there and alerting everything there. It's, it's very silent. They move fast. They've got really good battery life. Uh, you know, you can get uh, kits with trailers and stuff that if you need to haul in gear or, or haul in animals, hopefully, oh, right. they, yeah, that you, can, <laughs> that you, can, you have the op opportunity to do so. I mean, they're, they're getting a ton of popularity and I think they're going to be a big... Uh, Game big changer. driver going forward, right? Game like changer, it's just yeah. it's just nice, and I you know you're seeing a lot more people use them, and, and they're pretty easy to operate. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I can get this one started here. They have different settings for speed. Right now it's on low, so it's it's not going to be oh, too yeah. too fast. And you're you're comfortable on there? How's you, what's your level of comfort? You feel good? Oh yeah, yeah. This is and this is really this is really uh, pretty a tame speed. If we if we kick it up to uh, the mid. Right? It actually starts going quite a bit quicker. Oh, wow. Speed, so. Wow. It's not bad. That's, that's outrageous. Yeah. This is great. So now we need another compliment to make our hunting event a success, which is bows, right? So, For sure. yeah. um, so this is all fine and dandy as a, as a, as a perk, but we, we really need to get back to basics. So um, let's hop over and take a look at some of the bows and see what you would recommend for, sure. uh, for, for starting out. Okay. All right, Jason, so like we said, we need to get educated about bows here. So you have two different styles of bows. Um, maybe let's start with this one that's laying down and tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so this is just your uh, traditional recurve style bow. This one's a, a takedown model, which means it comes apart in three pieces, and you can change the the tension or weight on the bow by changing uh, these parts here, which are the limbs. Mm -hmm. um, this is your very basic. Everybody probably used something like this at a camp when they were growing up as kids, and it's most what most people get started in archery with. Um, much more difficult to be really proficient with, you know, in terms of accuracy. Right. And it's something that would be harder 
to be uh, good at hunting with, but people do uh, do it quite successfully who put in the time and dedication to do it. Now, how does this compare to something a little bit more modernized? I mean, this has a scope on it. Um, <laughs> Well, this is oh, this sorry, no, it's not a scope. No, it looked, this, it looked this, like a scope. Like a fiber optic. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this, so this is a uh, uh, one of the most highest end compound bows that's on the market right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't well, so we talked about draw length, right? Yes. It, with a bow like this, you pull it to a certain point. That could be shorter or further than you're actually supposed to pull it, mm -hmm. right? This has got a set length of pull. Okay. It's got something called a let off, which is very important, right? So as you pull back, this weight just gets heavier and heavier. This one has got, um, when the weight goes up, it gets to a certain peak and then it drops off mm -hmm. and then you're holding much less weight. I see. So this bow here at 70 pound pull and this one at 45, when we're pulled all the way back, we'll be holding quite a bit less weight with this one than we are on this one. Mm -hmm. It's gonna generate a lot more power because of that. So it's like buying shoes. You gotta come in, you gotta talk with, you, yeah, you gotta be fitted, yes. talk with a professional about exactly. what you feel your level of comfort is. Sure. Um, a couple of arrows, are the arrows different for each bow? Or would you um, just use the same arrow for each bow? Yes and no. Okay. So the arrow like builds and types are the same, but the most important thing is what we call spine on an arrow, which is how flexible it is. Mm -hmm. So arrows need to have a certain amount of flexibility to shoot well and correctly out of a bow. So a bow like this needs a much weaker spine, is what we would call it, than a bow like this, which will need a much stiffer spine to get good arrow flight. Okay. Especially when we're putting on the hunting heads. Yes. Because they have blades on them that grab air and steer the arrows downrange. We need to make sure that that spine on the arrow is set correctly for the bow so we get the best flight we can out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw um, the technician over here working on some of the bows earlier. Yeah. Um, maintenance. Um, people will come in and they can see you here at Heights and, and, sure, and, 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 and get yeah. that, that type of stuff taken care of. Let's talk a little bit about licensing. Uh, would you need a license to be a hunter? Uh, is that something that could be done here? Where do people have to go to get a license? Uh, you, you need a, if you want to hunt, you do need a hunting license. Yes. Um, and you need to take a hunter safety course okay. to get that. Um, we don't provide them here, but if you uh, Look at your local wildlife and here, Manitoba Wildlife Federation. Mm -hmm. um, if you contact them, they'll put you in contact with an instructor or someone um, that can help you get that. There's also an online course mm -hmm. that you can do if you go to, I think it's huntercourse.com, uh, and then you select your province. You can do it all online, and then you still have to be tested by uh, an instructor to make sure that your testing goes off mm -hmm. well, but you can do the actual course itself online, kind of at your own pace. So, Jason has been a wealth of knowledge here for us today. There's so much to take in and so much great stuff to see around here at the shop. Jason, tell them how to find you. You got a website? Yeah, you can find us at uh, www.heightsoutdoors.com. Um, on Instagram at Heights Outdoors and Facebook at Heights Archery and Hunting Supply. There you go. So if you want to get some of these questions answered, give Jason a call. He's a great guy. He'll sure make sure to get you all filled in. And uh, Jason, thanks for taking the time today and giving us this crash course. Um, it's really just the tip of the iceberg like I, we talked about in anything. Um, but it gave me a lot more knowledge about what you do here today oh, is great. So I feel educated. Thank you very much. Thanks.